Hello, my name is Caffrey and I'll be talking about Workhor, also known as Colesevralem. I want to go over some the patient consultation points. Side effects may include dyspepsia, nausea, nasopharyngitis, headache, and fatigue. And we also want to consult patients to take tablets with a meal and liquid. Immediate report symptoms of severe abdominal pain or severe constipation and also instruct patients to consume a diet that promotes bowel regularity. Report for symptoms for acute pancreatitis, such as abdominal pain that radiates to your back or tenderness when touching the abdomen. Also, lastly, it's important that we advise our famous patients of reproductive potential to take an oral contraceptive at least four hours before taking. Drug has drug may reduce the effectiveness of oral contraceptives. Now, I want to talk about some interesting facts. So, Workhol was FDA approved back in 2000 and was developed by Geritex Pharmaceutical, which later the company was acquired by Genem Science. The product was marketed by Daishi Cycle as Workhol here in the States. For the generic Workhol, it was started hitting the market in the early 2018. And Workhol brought a revenue of 45 million by the end of the June of 2018, but the sale dramatically declined to uh, 23 do- uh, millions of dollars by the end of June of 2019. Now, I want to talk about the mechanism of action. So, Workhol binds bile acid in the intestines and blocks their reabsorption. As the bile acid pool becomes depleted, the hepatic enzyme, which is a cholesterol 7 alpha hydrogenase, is upregulated, which increases the conversion of cholesterol to bile acid. This causes an increased demand for cholesterol in the liver, resulting in the increased activity for the HMG CoA reductase and an increase the number of hepatic LDL receptors. These compensatory effects result in an increased clearance of the LDL-C from the blood, which results in the increased serum LDL-C levels. However, one thing that we should point out, the triglyceride level may increase or may remain unchanged. Workhol is approved for two indications, which is the primary hyperlipidemia and type 2 diabetes mellitus. So now I'm going to talk about the dosages, starting with the primary hyperlipidemia. So the recommended dose of work code tablets in adults, whether used as monotherapy or in combination with a statin, will be six tablets by mouth once daily or three tablets by mouth twice daily. Now, in terms of the recommended dose for work code oral suspension in adults and children, um, it ranges from 10 to 17 years of years of old of age. Um, you take either one packet of 3.75 gram once daily, or one packet of 1.875, which is half grams of packet twice daily. Uh, for type 2 diabetes mellitus, similarly as for the primary hyperlipidemia, the recommended dose is 6 tablets once daily, or 3 tablets twice daily. And in terms of the oral suspension packet, it is practically very similar from each other, which is um, either one packet of 3.75 gram once daily, or half packet of um, 1.875 grams twice daily. So now I'm going to talk about the contraindication. So Workhol is contraindicated in patients with a history of bowel obstruction, a serum of triglyceride concentration more than 500 milligrams per deciliter, and lastly, a history of, of hypertriglyceridemia induced pancreatitis. Now I'm going to talk about the adverse events. Six points I want to point out is hypertriglyceridemia, uh, constipation or indigestion, hypersensitivity reactions, nasopharyngitis, any abdominal pain or pancreatitis, or lastly, cardiovascular adverse events. Now, I'm going to talk about the drug interaction. So the first row, drug with a no interaction with cholesterol, that will be cyclosporin, glyburidine, levothyroxine, and oral contraceptive containing ethanol, estradiol, and noradrenaline. Now, the second one will be the drugs with post-marketing reports consistent with potential DDI when com- administering with cholesterol will be phenytoin and warfarin. Now, last one will be drugs that do not interact with cholesterol based on in vitro or in vivo testing, which is the cephalexin, cephalofloxacin, digoxin, warfarin, phenofibrin, lovastatin, metformin, metoprolol, pioglitazone, quinidine, repaglinidine, vaporic acid, and barapamol. One of the things I wanted to point out about the warfarin is that there is no significant alteration of warfarin drug level with warfarin and cholesterol 
Corona administrated in an in vivo study, which did not evaluate warfarin uh, pharmacodynamic, which is the INR levels.